Hello everyone. Well, here we are again. Welcome to the Saturday slot. In a different place today. I hope you can all recognise I'm in the Lady Chapel at St James's. We thought it'd be a change. Now, what a difficult time we're having again. I really dislike putting on the news at the moment. I'm afraid of what we're going to hear. More restrictions, more statistics, all this talk of tier one, tier two, tier three. I'm really fearful for those whose jobs are on the line and who are now living in debt to keep going. We really must keep praying for all the issues affecting our country, the whole world in fact. We need to pray for those who are ill with the virus and also other illnesses whose treatment may have been delayed. For all those who work to look after people who are ill. For those who may be shielding and lonely without that opportunity to socialise or meet families. Those with mental health issues caused by the anxieties of no jobs or cuts in salaries. And also, we really must pray for those in authority in so many different departments who are making the very important decisions for us to follow at the moment. We pray that they have wisdom, discernment and compassion in all they do. As always, many of us turn to the Bible for guidance of how to pray. And I based one of my Saturday slots on this a few weeks ago. Or perhaps it could have been a few months ago because this talk is number 29. Yes, I am keeping track of it. Prayer is mentioned in so many books in the Bible showing the importance of prayer and the power of prayer. This weekend we are thinking more of the Bible as tomorrow is Bible Sunday. This week I've also recorded a school worship session and in it I talk to the children of how lucky we are to have Bibles so luckily a, a freely accessible these days. How important is your Bible to you? How often do you read it? Do you think it helps you? Is there something you always turn to? Do you have a favourite passage or verse? I think most people do have favourites for various reasons. In the good old days, BC, and by that I mean before Covid, our ACF here at St James belonged to the diocesan ACF, the Association of Church Fellowships, and it was always good to meet up with other groups for special services. And a few years ago, at one of our deanery events, nominated members were chosen to talk about a favourite hymn and also a favourite Bible verse. Do you know it was so good to hear them all and the reason why it was a favourite or a go-to. I can't say I have one favourite part of the Bible as there are so many readings, verses, whole chapters that I do go to according to what's happening in my life, how I'm feeling, whatever my needs may be at that time. Some are significant because of the special services they were used at, weddings, funerals, my licensing service in particular, those used on pilgrimage or just on a Sunday when I was per perhaps needing something and it actually spoke to me at that time. Now, on that occasion with ACF, I was chosen to do the Bible reading and I chose the first letter of John, chapter 4, beginning at verse 7, and this is how it goes. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love 
does not know God, for God is love. And so that passage goes on. I recommend that you read it. I do return to this from time to time because it does remind me of what is good in the world because God sent Jesus to show his love for us. We all need to be reminded about this when the going gets tough. My mood can change when I read or hear this because I get confirmation again and again of what God has done. Since the importance of love is the subject here, John says, Beloved. Such a wonderful word, isn't it, that? Beloved. We Christians are the beloved of God. One of the main things that separate Christians from the rest of the world is the great love that we have for our brothers and sisters in Christ. God not only loves but is love itself. To explain the love of God for us would be like trying to explain life itself. In the early Bible translations and using the old language, the word loveth is used. And really that means continues to love. Now I believe that we are a loving, caring nation just think of all those wonderful acts of kindness that were reported during the first lockdown. And we're hearing about them again now, aren't we? All those community pro programs and ch projects or things that are happening for charities. That makes me believe there is still hope for our nation to come back to God and be the Christian nation we started out to be. So, as I said at the beginning, we are told love is from God and that God is love. And John introduces the reader to the reasons why Christians love, because God is the essence of love. When you find a person filled with hate, you know that he or she has never experienced that great and selfish love that God has for each of us. There's a need in every person to be loved. Some have never realised that anyone loves them. And when you find a person in this condition, if you can make them understand that God loves them, I'm sure they can change. John also introduces the reader to why Christians love to follow the supreme example of God's sacrifice, sacrificial love in sending his son for us is so important. The judgment of sin on the cross was the supreme example of God's love for he poured out his wrath on his beloved son in place of sinners. God loved all of mankind, one at a time from the very beginning. If he did not, why would he have bothered to create us in the first place? The greatest love ever shown was the love of God for us when he sent his only begotten son to save us from our sin and from ourselves. Truly, our life is hidden in Jesus. Jesus is eternal life and God taught us by example the unselfish love that we need to have for each other if the world today needs one thing it's love before COVID I would always say take time to hug someone and perhaps say that you love them today let the love that God has shown you shine through you and make someone else's life a little brighter. We can still share that love, and yes, many do. Let's pray. More can be inspired by such a message of John's in this letter. So I think probably that's why I really go to this passage 
perhaps even more these days. So as we come to Bible Sunday, can you choose a favourite reading? One that perhaps inspires you, comforts you, takes away your anxiety, gives you a focus, a purpose, or just that reminder why you are a Christian. And you know, I'd love to hear someday of those favourite verses. Anyway, something for you to think about. Time to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your dearly beloved and only begotten Son into the world for love of me. Thank you that he was born to die for my sins so that I may live life more abundantly and eternally in him. Lord, I pray that your love may be shown forth in me, not only in my thankful praise, but in a life that is lived for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you all. See you next time.